Hello. Uh, Good evening. Welcome to EHAF Indonesia 2020 Goes Online. This is University Webinar Series. My name is Puji and I'm going to be moderating this webinar. This webinar is going to be presented by Institute of Technology, Carlo. Hello, welcome. Um, Hello. Hello. Thanks. Thanks so much for hosting today. My pleasure. So would you like to introduce yourself to the audience, please? Um, yes, um, my name is Rachel. I work at the International Office at Institute of Technology, Carlo. That's located in Southeast Ireland, um, just about one hour from Dublin. All right. Um, thank you very much. Um, for those uh, in the audience, please stay tuned until the end of the webinar because we will hold a Q&A session. If you have any questions about the presentation or anything related to Ireland's higher education, you can submit your questions in the YouTube live chat section anytime throughout the presentation. And now please welcome Ms. Rachel from Institute of Technology, Carlo. Thank you. So I'm going to start off by sharing my screen um, and we'll take the presentation from there. Um, just give me one second. And here we are. Yes. So as I mentioned, Institute of Technology Carlo is one of 11 universities in the Republic of Ireland, or sorry, 11 Institutes of Technology in the Republic of Ireland. Um, we are soon to become a technological university. So we will be joining together with uh, WIT, Waterford Institute of Technology, to become the Technological University of Southeast Ireland. And this will be happening in the next year or two. Um, so this is a picture of Carlo Town. Carlo is a small town. Uh, there's about 40,000 people living here. The Institute is a very big part of the life of the town and is located just on the edge. Um, you can't actually see it in this picture, but what you can see here uh, in the bottom close to the ruined castle um, is <clears throat> That's where I live and it takes me about 10 minutes on foot to reach the campus every day. So most of our international students live in the town centre and there's a variety of accommodation options. Um, and one of the great things about choosing Carlo for higher education is that you won't need a transport budget. Um, you will be able to walk um, and some students also get bicycles and cycle, um, but there are no, there's no public transport within the town because of its small compact size. Um, so I'm going to show you a little video here. Um, I'm just going to plug out my headset so that you can hear the sound. So um, I will be back with you when the video is over. Institute of Technology Carlo is a leading university level institution situated in the southeast region of Ireland in northwest Europe. With a population of almost 5 million, Ireland is a young and vibrant country with a highly educated workforce. As an English-speaking EU member state, Ireland holds strong economic and social links with the USA and the United Kingdom and has attracted many of the world's leading high-performance companies to its shores. Dublin, Ireland's capital city, is fast becoming known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. Institute of Technology Carlo is located in Carlo, just an hour from Dublin and is home to 8,400 students studying programs in business, humanities, science, computing, sport and engineering and offers over 80 undergraduate and almost 30 postgraduate programs at master's and doctorate level. The Institute's strong commitment to high quality research and innovation is evident in its research centres. Graduates of an honours degree from outside of the EU may stay and work in Ireland for one year after completing their studies, while those who have completed postgraduate degrees may stay and work in Ireland for up to two years. Students here can expect a complete third level experience that includes opportunities to participate in public showcases, internships and work placements. With over 65 clubs and societies, students also have an opportunity to really get involved in campus life and make many new friends. Our 15 million euro South Sports Campus will also broaden the extensive sporting facilities available to students. 
the Institute of Technology Carlo campus is a short walk into Carlo town, where our international students live in a variety of accommodation options. The town offers a superb range of eateries, bars, cinemas and nightlife. Students love the friendly, safe community feel of Carlo town and its easy access to the rest of the country. The OECD ranks Ireland in the top 10 globally for its quality of education, while the Global Peace Index lists Ireland amongst the world's 10 safest countries, making Ireland a great place to study in a safe and friendly environment. Graduates from Institute of Technology Carlo work in multinational companies in Ireland and all over the world. To make the most of the opportunity to study at Institute of Technology Carlo, please contact our international office. So hopefully you um, saw something interesting there um, and hopefully you had a good sound um, and good visuals. Um, so moving on, so you can see here um, in the little inset on the left hand side, the exact location of Carlo in relation to Dublin. Um, it's important to note that about 40% of the working adults in Carlo commute to work in Dublin every day. So it's within easy reachable distance of the capital. Um, this suits many of our students who um, choose Carlo for the institute and the program offered. Um, and then even when they graduate, they can choose to stay living here while commuting to work in Dublin. Obviously, there are a lot more job opportunities in Dublin, but the cost of living is also much higher. Another element of um, enjoyment for all of our international students is the opportunity to use Ireland as a springboard to explore mainland Europe. So from Carlo, you can be at the airport in Dublin within just one hour. And then within one or two hours, you can reach all of the major European capital cities. Um, so it's a really lovely experience to be here for studies um, and on holiday times to be able to go and explore Europe. Um, so all of the qualifications that are awarded at Institute of Technology Carlo are internationally recognized. So you don't need to worry that you'll come here and study and then your qualification will not be recognized wherever you decide to go to work. Um, we like to um, call ourselves the Institute of Firsts. So IT Carlo was the first institute of technology in the country to introduce computer games development. Uh, we were the first to introduce a common first year into um, computing and networking, meaning that students, if they're not sure which element of IT they'd like to specialize in, that they can all come in together in year one, do basic subjects related to computing, and then choose their specialist um, area of study from the beginning of year two. Uh, we're also the first institute to bring brewing and distilling into the academic space. And this was traditionally done within breweries and distilleries around the country. Um, but now you can get a degree in this at IT Carlo. Um, this has been running here now for the last three years. Uh, finally, we are the only Institute of Technology that offers aerospace engineering and one of only two higher education institutes countrywide who have their own hangar uh, for students who are uh, studying in this area. Um, so, you know, we pride ourselves on our niche courses. That means that the courses are very highly focused on a specific area. Um, and we also pride ourselves greatly on the fact that the education here is very career focused with an emphasis on professionalism and on excellence. Um, so just some information here about the Institute in general. Um, I won't go through each one individually, uh, but you can have a, have a quick glance over it all. Um, suffice to say that we are not a huge institute. Um, there are around about seven to 8,000 students studying here at the moment. Um, we are the second largest IOT, that's Institute of Technology in 2020, and that's based on total enrollment. So that's the second largest in Ireland. Um, but as I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, we will be, be becoming a technological university um, soonest. Um, and so, you know, we probably won't enjoy this second largest IOT accolade for too much longer. Um, so there's about 60,000 graduates of IT Carlo to date. Um, 
we have invested a lot in our campus space in recent years and um, I'll be showing you a little bit more about that as we move through the presentation including our new 15 million South Sports campus um, and the new Centre for Applied um, and Health Sciences which will be soon built um, and the new Science and Technology block also which we're hoping to be moving into by September 2021. Um, yep, so I'll move on there quickly. So these are some programs which are uh, of interest to undergraduate students. So there are four main faculties at IT Carlo, the Faculty of Engineering, the Faculty of Science, and the Faculty of Business and Humanities. Um, and within um, engineering, you'll find programs in electronic engineering, aerospace, civil, um, mechanical also. Within the Faculty of Science, there's two main departments. So you have the Department of Computing and Networking, and that's where you can study things like software development, cybercrime and IT security, game development, and creative computing and interactive digital art and design. There's a wide range of programs there, all of which can be viewed on our website or via the prospectus. Um, if there's um, this information is all available in our booth um, on the EHEF website as well. So the other side of the Faculty of Science is the Department of Science and Health. And within this faculty, you can study um, sport and exercise science, sports rehabilitation and athletic therapy, strength and conditioning, um, and a couple of others as well. Um, and then in the Faculty of Business and Humanities, you'll find a wide range of business related programs. These programs are also common entry meaning that you don't have to decide which area of business you want to specialize in when you start in year one. You can do a common year in year one, doing a common business subjects. That's throughout year one and year two. And then from the beginning of year three, you choose from one of the specialist areas which are marked here at the bottom of the slide. Um, the vast majority of bachelor degree programs or undergraduate programs at IT Carlo um, are offered uh, in for three years. That's the ordinary level bachelor or four years, which is the Honours Bachelor. Um, there's a very small number of programs which are level eight Honours Bachelor degrees, but take only three years. And these include Media and Public Relations, Early Childhood Education and Care, and uh, there is one other, oh, it's the Bachelor of Arts in Accounting. Um, we also have sports management and coaching programs here. They're the only programs of their kind in Europe. You can specialize in either soccer or rugby. There's also an uh, option for Gaelic sports, but it doesn't usually apply to international students. So these programs are a mix of sports coaching and business management. And these graduates can go on to work within sports clubs, within um, state sports and uh, organizations, etc. And then we look at the level nine programs. So these are master's programs. Uh, we don't have such a wide offering at this level. Um, but you can see here that there's two within IT, a couple within business. We have digital marketing, two within sports and health, and then three within, um, what, two within humanities. And the final one there is within engineering. Um, so all level nine master's degree programs are one year or 12 month programs. Students begin in September and they have lecture and exam from September to the end of May. And then they write their dissertation uh, in the summer months of June and July. And then graduation is usually in October. So these programs are made up of 90 credits. That's 60 credits from lecture and exam and 30 credits from the writing of the dissertation. If a student decides they do not want to write the dissertation or the extended project, on most of these programs, they can choose to apply for a postgraduate diploma as an ex exit award. This is also a level nine award, um, but it is important here to be clear that, you know, it is obvious to any prospective employer or anybody like that, that if you signed up for a master's and you graduated with a postgraduate diploma, that you didn't actually fulfill the um, course requirements as they were laid out at the beginning. So we're going to look at a couple of slides here now, looking at some feedback from individual students. So here we have on the right side, uh, Kirsten, she's from Iowa. You can see that she was studying sports rehabilitation, athletic therapy. This is very similar to physiotherapy, but with a focus more on the rehabilitation of athletes, particularly sports related injuries. So Kirsten's from a partner university in Iowa, in the United States. Um, and that particular program, they have their own partnership with this institute um, and students from there can come here and do a semester students from here can go there and do a semester 
Um, and what she liked about IT Carla was the knowledgeable lecturers, the fact that they were very approachable. Um, and she's very excited to share what she learned here with her classmates back home. So this is kind of a common thing that you hear from students at, at IT Carlo, that they really enjoy the small class sizes and the close relationships that they can build up with their faculty. When you're in a small group, um, and most of our programs have a limit of around 30 students, um, this means that you do get a lot of personal attention from the people who are teaching you. On the other side, you'll see Shane. Shane's an Irish student studying product design. Um, and he likes the small campus, <clears throat> the fact that you can get to know people very easily, um, and the fact that you can build relationships with your peers and with other students very easily too. Um, then we have Fiona. Fiona's a student of biosciences, and she's talking about the great lab facilities. So all the institutes of technology in Ireland have their history and their roots in preparing professionals for um, jobs in the engineering and science fields. Um, and over the years, we have added IT technologies to our offering, also business and humanities to our offering, but um, always kept our eye on the, those roots, the roots of preparing people for practical professional careers in technical uh, sectors. So, you know, we mentioned already about the small class size here. This has a lot to do with the high practical content in the programs. If students are required to be in a lab for large parts of their program, this means that unless you have enough lab space for 100 students, then you have to keep your class sizes small. So you, you can see how there's these different elements coming together all of the time to create the experience that students enjoy. So, you know, you will have a high practical content in your program. Um, you will therefore spend a lot of time in labs doing hands-on work. Um, and these labs obviously are very well equipped and very well kitted out. And as we mentioned a little earlier in the presentation also, a new science and technology block is on its way to us also. Um, so here you can see a couple of pictures of our library. So it's spread over three floors. Um, the library is a semi-quiet space. So you can go in there to do work on, at an individual workstation. If you look at the picture on the left, you'll see individual workstations, but you'll also see group working stations. And this is very important for us because your um, education here will not only be academic, you know, you'll also have a lot of focus on developing your soft skills, how you communicate, how you organize yourself, how you prioritize. You know, these are very important skills in the workplace. And as we're preparing students for employment, um, you know, it's not enough to only focus on the academics. A focus also has to be put on the soft skills. Um, so from the very beginning of your program here, you will be given group work to do and you will be given group projects to do and you will be assessed not only on an individual but also on a group level. Um, so the library reflects this uh, very well. Um, here you can see that um, on the left hand side, no, on the right hand side, my apologies, you'll see the Unum Software Development Lab. So Unum are an American company who have been instrumental in helping us to develop our um, software development program. Unum are an American company who have an industrial presence here in Carlo, and many of our software development graduates go on to work for them. Um, I suppose this is just a good example of the strong links between IT Carlo and industry. If we're preparing students for the workplace, it's important for us that we understand exactly what technical skills and what technical skill set they need to have to be employable in the sector. Um, and so, of course, um, you know, we want to work with the potential employers of our graduates as much as possible to inform the course content to ensure that what we're producing are work ready graduates. Um, IT Carlo has a second campus uh, down in Wexford. Wexford is in the southeast on the coast. Um, so it's a much smaller campus. It's still 100% IT Carlo, and it is the home of our School of Art and Design. Um, so down here in Wexford, you can study visual communications and design. You can study a pure art degree. There's a wide range of, um, of those types of programs available down there. We also have a brand new master's program um, down in um, Wexford, which is Master of Science in Digital Media with Business Analytics. It's running this year for, for the first time. Um, so it's an exciting program. Um, there's a lot more to learn about it. Please do reach out to me for further information if you're interested. The good news also is that all programs on the Wexford campus are currently running at a 20% discount for non-EU students. I'll be able to give more specific detail on this in just a moment. 
So as you can see, I mentioned uh, Wexford is by the sea. So um, it's a very artistic and creative place. It's the home of the National Opera House and, and the National Opera Festival, which takes place once a year. Um, and as I mentioned already, it's uh, where you can study visual communications and design at, at IT Carlo. And um, so students do an industry showcase at the end of every year, presenting their projects to local industry representatives. And that's what you can see happening in the picture on the left hand side here. So talking about sport, sport is a very important element of student life at, at IT Carlo. You know, we already talked about the programs that you can study in the area of sport. But even if you're not studying a sport related program, a huge number of IT Carlo students are involved in sports as extracurricular. So we have the highest rate of participation of any Institute of Technology in Ireland for sports clubs and societies. That means that more of our students are involved in extracurricular activities than any other institute. And um, this year we were for the second year running the top Institute of Technology in Ireland for sport. So if sport is your thing, you're coming to the right place. Uh, we have recently invested a large amount of money in um, our new sports campus, including six full size pitches and an Olympic running track. So on the screen here, this is just a little bit of fun for you. This is one of Ireland's Gaelic sports. You probably haven't seen this before. This sport is called hurling. So there are two main Irish Gaelic sports, um, hurling and Gaelic football. Um, and last year, for the first time, we had our first international student Gaelic football team. Um, so we limited them to football as opposed to hurling. It can take quite a few years to learn how to wield the stick as, as well as the Irish do. But last year, as I say, we had our first international student Gaelic football team um, who trained once a week and who went on to compete in an inter-varsity competition with other international students um, also learning Gaelic sports. Um, this is another uh, one of the clubs and societies. This is the Hill Walking Society. It's extremely popular with international students. Ireland, of course, has a lot of beautiful places to visit, but they can be quite difficult to access if you don't have your own car. So hence the Hill Walking Society is very popular with international students. About once a month or every six weeks, the students get put on a bus, taken to a place of beauty from which they can go on a hike. So in this particular picture here, you'll see a variety of students from European countries, Erasmus students. I also see students there from India. I I see students there from Canada, I see students there from China. So, you know, there's, um, that's, it's a really popular society with our international students. So speaking of where our students come from, um, all of the countries that you see on the screen right now, we have at least one student from there. We have larger numbers of students than of course from uh, countries like China, India, Canada, um, the European Union in general. Um, but European Union students tend to come here only for one semester or one year. And many of our Chinese students come from partner institutes and join us in the last two years of the undergraduate degree. Um, Canadian students join us for the last year of their undergraduate degree as well. Um, so there's a wide range of students from a wide range of countries accessing programs in a wide range of ways. Um, but you certainly don't need to feel that you will be alone when you're here. There's lots and lots of people of different nationalities living here. Each year in November, we celebrate International Day. So this is a chance for our international students to set up a stand, as you can see here in the pictures, in the main thoroughfare of the campus, um, and to give the Irish students and the domestic people the, a bit of an insight into their country. So they can prepare a little bit of food, or they can wear a national dress, or they might perform a song or dance. So it's a great um, and enjoyable day. Um, and here on the right-hand side, you can see our small but um, smiling Indonesian population. So there you have one student of aerospace engineering, one student of software development, and one student of, actually two students of aerospace engineering and one student of software development. Um, okay, so students always ask me, you know, do we uh, support them in finding jobs when they finish their uh, studies with us. So the first thing to understand is that 96% of our graduates find work within six months of completing their program. Um, and how does the Institute support them in this? Well, first of all, postgraduate fairs will happen here. So that means companies will come on campus looking to recruit students directly from programs. This tends to be more relevant to undergraduate students. Um, there's also industry showcases. So for example, the Department of Computing and Networking. Every year, their final year students and their master's students who have done a major project 
uh, display their projects and the department invite in representatives of various companies and they can literally shop around there for potential employees. It is not unusual for students to get jobs uh, at these showcases. And um, then we also have a postgraduate office um, and the lady who works in there is responsible for doing three main things for our students and our graduates. Number one, to help them to identify where the jobs are available. Number two, to help them to um, prepare a CV that will get them an interview. And finally, to prepare for the interview so that hopefully they will be successful there. So it's really your responsibility to figure out how you're going to progress from the Institute once you graduate. However, um, supports are available for you to make sure that you're making the best of what's available to you. So here you can see some of Ireland's top employers. Uh, we have really, um, there's a really wide range of multinational companies who are, um, you know, based here in Ireland and choosing Ireland as their European base. Um, all graduates of level eight programs um, get a one year stay back with work visa to stay in Ireland. And all graduates of level nine programs, um, they get two years to stay and to work here when they graduate. Um, so Ireland has the highest number of um, international workers of any EU country. Um, and so it's important to understand that when you go to work here in Ireland, you will be working in a multicultural organization most likely in a multicultural team you know so the experience that you get from working with people of other cultures while you're studying uh, will hopefully be very beneficial and stand to you as you progress so we're just going to have a look at a couple of alumni i'm conscious of the time so i don't want to take too long i do want to leave some time for questions and answers at the end so i think i'd like to focus particularly on eric seeing as eric is from indonesia so eric graduated in june 19 with a bachelor of science honors in software development um, all students in the Department of Computing and Networking go on a work placement in year three. So this term work placement is, can be used differently in different countries. So a work placement in Ireland is when you go, um, you go out into the workplace during the academic year and ex in exchange for being in the workplace, you get academic credit. So it's not job placement. Yeah, it's not for the end of the program. It's during the program and it's a required part of the program. So all students in the Department of Computing and Networking and all students in the Department of Business do a work placement in year three. Eric did his work placement in Chagask, which is the Irish National Institute for Agricultural Research. Um, what did Eric like about Carlo? You can see the three bullet points here. The things that we've mentioned already, the small class sizes, the high level of personal attention from the lecturers, and the six month work placement in year three. So Eric returned to Institute of Technology um, after taking one year off and returning home to Indonesia. He came back this September and he's now studying on the Master of Science in Data Science, which is also in the Department of Computing and Networking. So practical information, here are our fees and our living costs. All students are collected from the airport on arrival and transferred to their accommodation in Carlo. You need to be health insured in order to be able to get an Irish residence permit. Um, and immigration processing costs about 300 euros per year. So these are the approximate costs. Obviously, how much you spend will depend on the kind of choices that you make. Um, and so, you know, you just need to consider that um, in terms of budgeting. So these are scholarships and discounted courses. So our undergraduates, if they have an IELTS of seven or above, uh, will be given a 1,000 euro fee discount. And for postgraduate candidates, they need to have a high mark in their undergraduate as well as a seven in IELTS. Um, and then we have a further 20% off in the Department of the Built Environment within Engineering and of course in Wexford as well. So just there at the bottom, you can see that if you are in Wexford or the Department of the Built Environment, you'd be studying undergrad for 8,200 a year and postgrad for 9,200 a year. I'm going to leave this slide up for a little while. I'd like you to please like and follow our social media pages. I use these pages to keep the student body currently here in Carlo updated with what's going on, opportunities for them to socialize, to join in with things, whether they be institute or local community initiatives. And um, so if you are interested in IT Carlo, this is a really nice way to get a good insight into what's happening here in terms of student life. So you can follow us on Instagram at International Carlo IT, and you can follow us or like us on Facebook um, under Institute of Technology, Carlo International.
So I'll leave that one up on the screen for now. Um, and I'll invite any questions, if there are any questions. Um, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Rachel. It was uh, such an insightful introduction to IT Carlo and how to study there. Uh, now we have a few questions. Uh, we can start the Q&A session. So the first question, it's a pretty much FAQ. Uh, it, uh, these questions appear again and again. Uh, it's about funding. So when it comes to funding, other than those you have mentioned um, in your presentation, uh, is there any scholarship opportunities or tuition waiver available for Indonesian students to study uh, at IT Carlo for um, any level of uh, study? Um, no, so not directly through IT Carlo. Um, there is a scholarship available from the Irish government. It's called the Government of Ireland Scholarship. And this will fund students of master's programs or students in their final year of undergraduate studies. However, um, the institutes of Ireland have absolutely no control over who those scholarships are awarded to. Um, this program is administered um, by the government of Ireland itself. Um, so you can find out about that by searching for the government of Ireland scholarship. Um, but otherwise, IT Carlo are the vast majority of our students are self-funding. Um, and we um, offer the scholarships um, that I mentioned during the presentation only. So it's just the discounts as opposed to full cover. All right, uh, moving on to registration. Uh, so on applications for bachelor um, degrees, can Indonesian high school graduate apply with their degree certificate or um, their national exam uh, results? And for those with IB or A-level curriculum, can they apply with their prediction score? Yes, yeah, so what we're looking for for undergraduate programs is applicants who have 12 years of full-time education behind them. So during the presentation there, you would have seen a picture of um, three Indonesian students who are undergraduates here at the moment. One of them came out of an international school. To the best of my knowledge, he had an IBDP, and, which is an international baccalaureate diploma, and he also had the local high school completion exams so again to the best of my knowledge your your high school is goes to grade 12 so as long as students successfully complete grade 12 they are welcome to enter directly into year one of our undergraduate programs now we do understand that the timing is a little bit difficult in indonesia um, if my memory again serves me correctly that the students may not be getting their final results until kind of july august time which can cause mm -hmm. some problems with the visa application but we would ask anybody who's interested in applying for an undergraduate program to go to your school and ask your teacher for predicted scores. So how do they think you will score in the final state exams? And based on those predicted scores, we can make you a conditional offer. Um, and then as long as your scores are close or, or the same as those predicted scores, then you can submit that final document in July, August and then apply for the visa then. I see. So there will be two uh, levels of application because you would first be given conditional um, uh, that's, offer. That's correct. And then no right. student may actually move to accept the offer until they have met the condition. So I if see. the condition here is the submission of the actual final grades, then we do have to wait until that document comes through before the student can accept. However, the student will will know that they are, you know, conditionally accepted, you know, they can meet the English language requirement. If they need to, they can begin to prepare the visa documentation, et cetera. Usually we find that this system of predicting scores that teachers are quite good at doing it. There's not usually a big difference between what the teacher predicts and what the student then actually scores. So we, we find this process quite dependable and usually a student is moving forward towards the visa application stage, preparing all of those documents, which can take quite a long time, um, and then just waiting to submit the final scores before actually activating the process. All right. Uh, okay, moving on to, uh, from there, we have uh, a question on applying for postgraduate degrees. So do applicants need to include a recommendation from the employer or their former lecturer uh, to apply? And do you allow a major changing application? Like, for example, if someone had non-engineering background for their bachelor degree, but they've worked in 
uh, engineering field for quite some time, and then they decided to go studying something that's engineering related for their postgrad. Uh, how is that possible, or do you consider that on a uh, you know case by case basis? How does it work? Okay, so those are really really super questions about the postgraduate application in in Ireland because we are quite limited as to what we can offer students. The rule, the hard and fast rule, is that a student must be qualified in the same area with their undergrad degree as they want to study in the master's degree. However, as we know, there can be master's degrees that don't have an undergraduate equivalent. So for example, we offer a master of science here in sports performance analysis. And we are 99% certain that there is no undergraduate degree anywhere in the world in sports performance analysis. So how do we manage that? We have something called an RPL form. It's a recognition of prior learning. So if you're applying for a master's and your undergraduate is different, it, has, it comes from a different area, what we would ask you to do is to write us a good strong CV showing the experience that you have in relation to the master's you're applying for and a statement of purpose explaining why you've chosen the program and how you feel that it will um, you know, enhance your career potential moving forward. So. I suppose occasionally the hard and fast rule stays fast. So for example, the master of business, it's, you know, it's not an unusual program. You can't have a bachelor in mechanical engineering and progress to the master of business unless you have a good amount of work experience in the middle that has exposed you to business. So there's two options here. One, you can do what we call a conversion course. That's a higher diploma. It's the same academic level as an honors bachelor degree. OK, as the final year, it's level eight. And when but when the candidate completes that program, they are eligible to go to level nine in a new area. So here's an example. Somebody wants to access the Master of Business, but they have an undergrad in mechanical engineering. So they apply to do a higher diploma in business and there will be specialist areas. It could be a higher diploma in international business, in business management, in marketing. And then they complete that one year program, 60 credits. And now they're qualified to level eight in the area of business too, and they can access the master of business. So there are ways to get around the rule, uh, but the rule is most definitely there. And um, so I think the phrase that you use, the case by case basis, it's extremely important when we're looking at applications for postgraduate studies. Um, every student is different and has come via a different route. Every student has a different level of work experience, has a different level of application of the knowledge that they gathered in their undergraduate degree. So I suppose it's really only very strict when a student has just graduated and wants to progress directly to masters. Then absolutely we need the same area of study. So hopefully that's clear. I know it's right. not an easy topic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's actually pretty encouraging because you know, once uh, since you uh, as you mentioned before, case uh, case by case basis is uh, really the uh, consideration other than the hard and fast rule. So uh, there are opportunities. You just need to adjust it with your uh, you know personal situations. Correct. That's exactly right. And you just need to contact us and talk to us and tell us. And you know, once we understand where you're coming from and exactly what your background is, you know, then we can assist as much as we can. I see. So now uh, we'll move on to uh, what seems to be the final question. Um, so what is the job opportunity is like after graduation from IT Carlo? Like, for example, is it common to have on campus recruitment or how can the students or fresh graduates can make use of IT Carlo support or link to industries to find employment? Super. So great question. Um, yeah, yeah, there's there's lots of links uh, between IT Carlo and and industry. Uh, first of all, you know, it's good to point out that, you know, there's small class sizes. So you graduate in a small group. So out in the world, post-graduation, when you're looking for work or if you indeed begin in a new company, you know, you're not going to meet millions and millions of other IT Carlo graduates. Therefore, when you do meet them, they do tend to, you know, to have a good connection with each other. And that's definitely feedback that we get from uh, many of our graduates, um, you know, that they're impressed by the connections that we have in, in industry um, and the strong bonds that are created while they're studying here that then move on into the workplace with them. So uh, industry showcases are not unusual here. So that's when the departments, the relevant department here at the Institute invite 
industry representatives onto the campus to see the final projects of graduating students. They could be undergraduate students or master's students. Um, and they then literally get to shop around, they get to meet the students, look at the projects and see, you know, who, who are the people who are likely to be the, you know, the, the next layer of new employees. Um, and then also there are, there's a graduate office here on campus and Judy, who works in the graduate office, is responsible for supporting students in finding out where jobs are available, preparing CVs so that they can secure interview, and then also preparing for interview so that they can be successful there. And um, so there's lots and lots of supports. However, you know, I always say very, very loudly, it is the responsibility of each individual student to figure out how they want to progress in their career. Um, and, you know, particularly if they're coming here to study a master's, one year goes by very quickly, you know, so you need to have this, you know, what am I going to do next on your mind pretty much from the beginning. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that, you know, can't be overstated. And um, even undergraduates, I mean, we have students here who are at the beginning of year three are starting to think about the graduate program that they want to do at the end of year four, you know, so everything is in the preparation. So the more groundwork that's put in, then obviously the more success that is, is likely. Right. Thank you very much, uh, Miss Rachel, for introducing us to IT Carlo and answering our questions and especially showing us how uh, students from Indonesia can actually thrive uh, in the university, even though they're studying half the world away, far from home with yep. a lot of things to, you know, adapt to. So thank yep. you very much once again. Uh, that is the end of our Q&A session. Um, thank you so, so much. All right. Um, I would also like to remind the audience of this webinar that EIF 2020 will hold a virtual fair on Friday and Saturday, where you can consult directly with the university representatives. You can access the virtual fair through event.ehaf.id. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.